But we're here to talk about the search warrant that was conducted at 200 Godwin Road yesterday. Uh, we also want to announce the arrest of Miguel Cabrera, who's 57 years old. Uh, he was arrested on two counts under Florida Statute 82812, Animal Cruelty and Sales. The prohibited act that focused on these charges is the specific language, no person shall shackle or hoist with intent to kill any animal prior to rendering the animal insensitive to pain. Uh, this investigation was brought to the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office on December 13th, 2023 by ARMS, Animal Recovery Mission, a nonprofit. Um, who they responded to a Craigslist ad. Um, they went to the address and they purchased a goat. In the, purchase of, of, in the process of purchasing that goat, uh, it was witnessed and captured on video, the inhumane act. And then they went again back to that residence that was selling the, the animals and purchased a goat and a pig. And again, on that occasion, also witnessed two more inhumane acts. Um, I'm now gonna turn it over to Captain Troy Norman who oversaw the investigation. But before we leave, or before you guys leave, we're gonna provide you guys the raw footage that we're talking about, these inhumane acts. So it's very descriptive. We're gonna focus on just the aspect that we've made the arrest with the arrest warrant, as well as the search warrant. But there's other aspects to this that Richard from Arms can talk about. So right now I'm gonna pass it off to Captain Troy Norman. Good afternoon. Yesterday mor uh, m morning, members of the St. Louis County Sheriff's Office and Department of Agriculture conducted a search warrant at 200 Godwin Road. The pur purpose of the search warrant was to gain additional evidence in this case and to arrest Mr. Cabrera. During the search warrant, we recovered more than 100 animals and some instrumentalities used in some of these acts. Um, there was also meat that was located there that was from previous slaughters that was actually there for sale. So for more information, I'm gonna turn this over to our lead detective, Clay Mangrum. Good afternoon. I was brought to this investigation. This was brought to me in December of last year. Uh, it was brought to me by ARM based on their looking into what was he, Captain Norman said earlier. I was provided with the video to review for criminal investigation. Uh, through going through that video, it met the criteria for Florida Statute 82812 for cruel, aggravated cruelty to animals, which is a third degree felony based on what we focused on was the manner in which the animals were slaughtered without, it's not being done in a humane manner, they were done without rendering them insensitive to pain. There was quite a bit of suffering that they endured prior to being processed. And I'll now turn it over to Mr. Cudo. Spell your name. My name? Yes, sir. Clay, C-L-A-Y. Last name is Mangrum, M-A-N-G-R-U-M. And detective? Detective, deputy, yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Richard, you want to tell us a little about your organization and how we got to this? Sure. The animal recovery mission was based out of Miami Beach, Florida. Uh, we created ARM uh, oh, roughly 2009, specifically to investigate illegal slaughterhouses and illegal horse slaughter. We've then, since then, have branched out and looked into now the worst crimes against animals globally. We are all over the globe, okay? Everywhere from Bangladesh, Nepal, India, Mexico, and all over the United States and right here in Florida. Many of the worst crimes that we video while undercover are right here in Florida. Um, we've conducted roughly 250 investigations, about 225 of those investigations on illegal slaughterhouses in the state of Florida have led to ARM working positively with law enforcement and conducting raids with law enforcement as we did yesterday. But I can tell you right now that from my experience, not every department, not every office is positive to animal cruelty laws. Um, they are many times unenforced. And a lot of our cases are just mere social media posts with no enforcement, no one taking full responsibility for the crimes, no one being arrested or prosecuted, tried, and none of the, none of the animals being rescued. Yesterday was a day that we all work for, right? Um, and just bottom line is the animals what, got what they deserve yesterday. People were held accountable. Um, this office, St. Lucie Sheriff's Office, acted in rapid form. 
and they really did. I'm not just telling you this because I'm surrounded by law enforcement right now. It is... It was a, an extremely positive first meeting here, and I knew that the animals in this community were going to get what they deserved, something just. And what did we see yesterday? We saw over 100 animals be rescued. They are now at Arm Sanctuary. Arm Sanctuary is a black site. It is not open to the public. So many arrests have been made in the past. So many people um, are, some of the, many of the bad people in this state are looking for us, right? Um, they don't like that we work with law enforcement. Uh, that's a very small percentage because of the good people, the upstanding people in these communities, anyone and everyone hates animal abuse. It's just what it is is what it is. And the suffering that happened on this property was extreme. When you're undercover and you're watching animals be skinned alive, be stabbed to death, be boiled alive, um, it's a tough job. And when you go to law enforcement and these cases are not taken, um, it's, a, it's, it's an extremely tough thing for the undercover investigator. I've been doing this for 15 years and I've banged my head on the wall when our cases have not been taken. It's very, very tough. We work towards what happened yesterday and all props to this office, really. Um, the animals now will live at Arm Sanctuary they will never leave. Um, they're never adopted out. And they're now, as we speak, adjusting to the sanctuary environment. The pigs are in their mud holes in their ponds. The cattle are with other cattle in large green 20 to 30 acre pastures. Um, everybody's doing great. Um, we can release some footage at a later date um, so you can see these animals. And again, the detective to the sheriff, and all the staff, um, we appreciated it, Arm. So, in, in terms of what the sheriff's office found, um, the, like the PC essentially for Mr. Cabrera, could maybe one of the investigators kind of <coughs> elaborate a little bit more on that, like specifically what Mr. So Cabrera the the the, the the video that we're going to be sending to you guys here shortly, the raw video, I would suggest you guys uh, blur some images out before you use it, is going to be the information that our detectives used that went to the state attorney's office that also went to a judge to, to formulate the probable cause for the search warrant as well as for these arrest warrants. So, so then is Miguel Cabrera, are you saying that Mr. Cabrera is pictured on video, I guess, treating these uh, animals inhumanely? Or Correct. Yes, he, he'd be the person photo, uh, videoed in this video, um, and this video will be released to you guys. If not now, you guys should have it in your inboxes. Okay, but but um, so, so it was on two dates, Mr. Cabrera stabbed or killed or whatever, inhumanely a couple of animals, is that? Yes, sir. It? Okay, and what do, you, what do investigators believe, like from the sheriff's office, believe was occurring at this property? Well, the, the, the video that we have um, is the video that was provided for us that sparked the investigation, and that's what we based uh, this investigation on, which we're going to provide to you. You had a question? Yes, I do. Uh, there were a few people that looked like in that video. Is anybody else facing charges, or do you expect any other charges forthcoming for others that may have been involved in this? Absolutely. The, the video only captured a portion of this investigation. Um, now that we executed, the, the detectives executed the search warrant, they were able to collect more evidence you know, different documents, different things that could link other participants to this. So right now it's just a matter of them putting the pieces of the puzzle together and holding everybody accountable for their actions. So the investigation's still on? Absolutely, and absolutely. In his first court appearance today, I believe Mr. Cabrera kind of said to the judge, well, in my country, this is normal. What would you say to that? You know, uh, there, there's no words to, to describe what is seen in this video. Um, and we'll, we're gonna let you, you be the judge of that. That's why we're unheard of releasing this raw unredacted video to you so you could see firsthand exactly what these animals went through um, and exactly how they were inhumanely or how we determined along with the state attorney and the judges felt that it filed under the uh, the inhumane act. Was Mr. Cabrera living there? I'm sorry, Angela? I wanted to ask, uh, Richard, when you yep. said that um, at times that it hurts you when you, it's not enforced, is it not enforced because law enforcement agencies, some agencies are able it or they're, um, they just don't know they're ignorant of what's they're ignoring the case they to be honest they don't work they don't want to work they don't want the workload um, they don't see an animal even though there are state statutes felony statutes that protect animals in our state in the state of Florida 
Um, they push that in the background. Possibly their office or their department is too busy with other crimes. Um, and they don't see an animal to be worthy of a large investigation. Um, that's the heartbreaking part of it. What is the right way to put these animals down if they want to settle their... Yeah, in the slaughter environment, um, I do a decent amount of undercover work with the USDA and have for the rough, roughly 15 years now. Animals have to be rendered insensible to pain, which means they have to be knocked out. It's no different than you and I going into surgery and having that scalpel put into us. You're not going to react because you're under, right? That animal, if that blade hits that animal, even if that animal was attempted to be rendered in insensible to pain by high voltage of electricity, captive bolt, or a large caliber bullet around to the head, if that animal reacts to that, blade, to that blade, that's a felony under our statutes in the state of Florida. These animals at, at uh, Cabrera's property on Godwin Road, they didn't even attempt to attempt to render these animals insensible. They actually took enjoyment. They would laugh and joke at the animal screaming as they were hanging and then that, that blade was penetrated. Um, these aren't people that anyone in this county or anyone else for that matter want as their neighbors. This is a very violent property. Did, did Mr. Cabrera live there? Because I know that home is owned by another individual. I'm not he... certain. So uh, Richard touched base on a couple of different things. You know, the, the sheriff's office is focusing all of our investigative issues on the video evidence that we provided to you. So you have the evidence that we have, as well as some evidence that we've collected during the search warrant that we hadn't released yet because we're still in the middle of processing it. So there's a lot of other things that, that ARMS does um, that, that they do out in the community. So there's some statements that he made that is outside of the scope of the four corners of the war arrest warrant that we have, which we're going to release to you guys as well. But we're focused on the video evidence of those specific acts that we have uh, evidence of and what we're focusing on. Um, and then I see, Dan, you had a question? Um, well, actually, uh, a question that some people are asking on the SLC scanner site is how could they get involved with supporting ARMS? How could they give you guys support as a mug? We are a charity. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization, um, very similar to the Humane Society or the Red Cross. Uh, we do operate on donations. So people could help, well, the animals that were just seized um, are looking at a lot of vet care and feed and housing and support from our employees. Um, they can go to animalrecoverymission.org and make a charitable donation, which is a tax write-off, um, and spread the word. So a big part of this and a big part of the props to, again, the sheriff's office is getting the word out. We have a lot of people in this state that are opening and that have had opened these operations before, many of them in Miami. And a lot of these people are moving north. This should send a clear message to people that are even thinking of opening something like this in St. Lucie County or have already opened an illegal slaughterhouse or illegal activities stemming from uh, an animal cruelty in this county to either, if you're open, close your doors now, or if you're thinking of coming in here, think twice, because the hammer has been dropped. Did Cabrera have any prior charges uh, I, don't, I don't have his criminal history in front of me, but we encourage everyone, anybody who wants to be, have a family farm, anybody who wants to harvest their own food at the sheriff's office, do it. You know, we encourage that, that that's your rights to do. Again, we're focused on the inhumane act of that, these slaughters that we have here, and that's what we base this specific investigation on. So you had a question? Yes, yeah, so yesterday Mr. Kudo had said they were also breeding animals for, quote, ritualistic purposes as well as training animals to fight on the property. Is that something that you guys can attest to? You know, I, we, this, as a sheriff's office, you know, we, uh, a person's religion, we, we want to respect that, their constitutional right. Um, if, if it falls within the guidelines of the law and the statutories that they can do that, you know, we're all for that. Um, again, some of the statements that were made, although we respect ARMS and their, their statements, you know, we're just speaking on the video evidence that we're providing to you guys. And that, that's the, the four corners and the scope of our investigation and our involvement with this. There's a lot of other key factors that, that come in there, but it, it hurts to watch that video. Um, and, and again, you, you guys would be the judge of that. You know, it's not a very uh, sensitive video to watch, but we feel that it's important to show you guys. And again, just highlighting that specific part of the statute, this is word for word. No person shall shackle or hoist 
with intent to kill any animal prior to rendering the animal insensitive to pain. Now that's a statue or actual verbiage out of the statue for that. So just take that small clip of, of multiple pages, watch the video, and, and I mean, it's, 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 it's sad, but it's, it's, it's a, unfortunately it happened. Now are they charged as violating the Humane Slaughter Act for each animal or one overwhelming charge? Uh, we have two charges for the two different incidents, um, which I'm sure they'll get direct filed and, and the state could sort it through. But again, it, it's not just us. FDA is working this with us. Uh, you know, we reached out to Animal Control, um, the uh, FWC. So all, all of our all of our organizations, the state attorney's office, you know, from the prosecutors. And so it's a it's an effort, and it, it's something that we take serious here in St. Lucie County. Well, did did Mr. Cabrera live there, or was he owner of this business? Uh, did he live there? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that he lived there. Um, the, I believe the, the affidavit has his address there. And what about the homeowner? Is that person going to be charged? That's a different person. Again, we, we, collect, we, we based our investigation on the evidence that we collected, that we provided to you. We collected more evidence the day of the search warrant, which we'd be able to now further that is determine who's involved, who's getting financials, who's making ledgers and things like that. Angela, do you have a question? Well, that will the owner be charged? Absolutely. And I believe uh, Cabrera is the act, the person who conducted these acts that we have actually doing it. Um, so it, it's, it comes down to the person who does the, the act, who doesn't take the steps to, to do that. There's a lot of animals there. And, and we've seen some comments that, that the animals looked healthy. Well, of course, they're for sale for meat. And, and, and no one's saying that you can't do that. It's just the act and, and how these animals were butchered. You know, leading up to it, you know, there, there's humane ways, there's inhumane ways, and we feel that you getting the raw footage, you'll see for yourselves exactly what what we're seeing, what prosecutors are seeing, what other investigators are seeing, and I, I can't fathom anybody coming to a different conclusion. Aside from the inhumane animal slaughtering, I think you mentioned yesterday, Mr. Mr. Kudo, about how it was pounds of meat being sold in that Craigslist ad. Mm -hmm. Is that alone unlicensed? Is that also illegal according to Florida statutes? You know, we didn't get into, we have FDA uh, working with us on that. You know, when people purchase meat, they want to make sure they're purchasing meat that's healthy. Um, that's part of the ongoing investigation. And again, we, we specialize in, in, in everything. We have an agricultural unit, but meat packing uh, isn't, isn't one of the sheriff's office specialties. So we rely on working with our partnerships with the feds. And they're taking an active role in this and, and understanding the dynamics. Was it meat processed for themselves? There's so many different dynamics, too, because people did live there. Everything else for him? Everything else? Anything Actually, one, one last more. thing. Do you oh, know okay. if he, uh, Cabrera, that is, posted bond? I believe he did. 